Hey yo, hey yo, what's up my people? What's going on people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. Hope you're doing well, mate. Genuinely really do hope that. And welcome back to Chelsea News, of course, the daily series here, friend, where I reflect on what's happening with Chelsea and what's been said about Chelsea across the headlines, giving you my opinion on it. More importantly, as always, asking for yours. Today we reflect on the information coming from Fabrizio Romano. That's right, the big transfer guru himself. I'm citing a couple of articles from Court Offside talking about Alvarez, a central defensive midfielder, and hot dog, we need one of those. We get in, we can get into that. We're also going to talk about the Mason Mount truth because there has been some lies wriggling around the media about overly hated Mason Mount, which is you know not not great. Plus, of course, we've drawn Man City again. Horrendous scenes <laughs> in the other domestic cup away again. Look, whatever, man. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate that. Like, comment, subscribe. All those interactions that make you feel good, baby girl. Uh, yeah, man, thanks for joining me. Let's just get straight into it. Yes, so before I talk about transfer news and Mason Mount lies and, you know, just the general stuff like that, let's talk about Chelsea drawing the English champions, Manchester City, yet again in the first domestic cup round, yet again away from home, yet again. And I know what you're thinking, and I echo those sentiments, we're all thinking, that's some bullshit, <laughs> which it is. Man, come on, the first, you think like, in a time of transition, and yes, we've been saying transition for a long time, but we are, mate. We've got new ownership, we've got a whole new management team, we've got a new philosophy trying to be implemented. We've got loads of new heads of recruitment, technical directors, sporting directors. Now, for, for all the times we used to say it, absolutely now we are in a time of transition profound and potent and pungent transition and you think all right a bit of a cup run maybe or like just face some other teams but to both in the league cup and the fa cup the first rounds we're involved both we play manchester city away when it rains it pours ladies and gentlemen in a way you can think you know Fine, look, we're not expected to win either of those games. Um, so it's a little bit like pressure's off and like Potter's like, meh, all right, well, if we lose, no worries. My my job as Chelsea manager right now is to just set the foundations for a new development and movement in the right direction with all these new staff, you know, getting rid of some players, um, bringing in some players and starting to find a rhythm and, uh, you know, if we lose these games, whatever, this is just the beginning of a long journey. And hopefully, you know, we hopefully we put in a performance against City in the FA Cup away. You know, why not? You know, if we find a bit of form after the World Cup, Chelsea are a good team, but we need to find ourselves again. Also, you know, we play a friendly in like 12 odd days or 11 days, whenever it is in uh, uh, Abu Dhabi, I think it is. You know, we have Reese James back for Fana, Chilwell's nearly fit. We've got, like, you know, Jorginho, Kepa. Oh, we're going to have a good team. And Man City's priority will be chasing down Arsenal in the league and will be the Champions League. So who knows? Maybe. Let's not be defeatist. We're still Chelsea Football Club. But the point is, it's a difficult time and we're getting difficult fixtures. Enough of that. Let's move on. So, uh, let's talk about Mason Mount quickly, and then we'll do Edson Alvarez. Both of these stories are coming from Fabrizio Romano on court offside. Now, of course, there are recent headlines saying that Mason Mount had rejected a £200,000 deal, uh, a week deal before the World Cup. That people were speculating that he's demanding all this money and he doesn't care about Chelsea. And it turns out it's not true. Um, Mason Mount gets such a hard time, man, and it's not, like, he does nothing wrong. He won, like, player of the season two years in a row, voted by the fans. I know all this is usually Twitter and online nonsense, but I just saw, I just tweeted a stat out earlier that since his debut in 2019 for England, no one has created more chances than Mason Mount. <laughs> and he's not an attack, he's a midfielder, he's, like a, he's not like a number 10, really, he's a number 8. He does create chances, he does work hard, he does score the odd goal and get the odd assist. He's doing all he can, he works really hard, he's professional, he's got a good attitude, he trains well. 
And a lot of guys just give him shit. I just don't get it. Anyway, headlines came out that he rejected a deal. That is apparently not true. So let's read some information now. The England International's current deal with the Blues is set to expire in the summer of 2024, about 18 months time. So the club would be wise uh, to sort this out as soon as possible. It seems to be taking time, however, but Romano has provided a reassuring update saying that both sources close to Chelsea and the club seem to have denied talk of their negotiations breaking down. Discussing Mount's future, Romano said this, quote, I'm told there are still negotiations going on between Chelsea and Mount. Many of the rumours on salary offer and similar stuff have been denied by both sources close to Chelsea and the player. It's still all an open negotiation and Todd Bowley really wants Mount to stay. Let's see what happens in the coming weeks. It's fair to say Mount has not been at his best this season, yeah? But most Chelsea fans will surely want to see the 23-year-old stay at the club for the long term. Mount came up through Chelsea's academy. He's been a key first-team player at such a young age, helping the West London Giants, which is going to be our new name, isn't it, under Bowley, win the Champions League. And he, of course, he set up Havertz's his goal and, uh, you know, he scored against Real Madrid. You know, he's got loads of big goals. He's had over 10 goals and 10 assists in the Premier League last season. He's an incredible player. And absolutely, we should want to sign him up. And yeah, he hasn't been in this great form, but no one really has uh, of late. You know, you could talk about anyone, really. But it is good news. Um, I think it is important we, we sign him up to a long-term deal. I don't think he's untouchable. If he plays bad games, he needs to be dropped, despite what Potter said about giving him rhythm. I think if he's playing poorly, stick him on the bench for a game or two. I feel that we need other midfielders that can challenge him for a number eight creativity and I, oh, I think those players could be players we've already got in Carney Chokwameka, Conor Gallagher, Cesare Cazade who by the way scored a perfect hat-trick in the development squad after scoring that 40-yard scream of the week before he's looking seriously seriously good and of course we're almost certainly going to sign Arsene Sakarian, who's a very creative midfielder. I think he's 19 years old as well. So Mount will be challenged, as he should be. But he should be given a really well-paid contract extension, as he should be. You know, as a professional, a good representative of the club. Um, as, you know, uh, he, he speaks well, he works hard, he trains hard, he posts numbers. He's got a high profile, he starts for England. You know, you don't want to lose that. Mason Mount would go somewhere else and just be excellent for someone else. I said, like, look, if Klopp, Pep, Guardiola, you know, pick your poison, Lewis and Rike, Hansi Flick, um, any manager managed Chelsea, they're all starting Mason Mount. It's just, is how it is. Uh, and the numbers reflect that. But let's stop talking about Mason Mount and let's stop talking about other players transfer related. Cool. So, Chelsea have... <laughs> Good players, but we need certain types of players. Now, we spoke about uh, Declan Rice, I believe, in yesterday's video and how he's two players are ahead of Chelsea in terms of, uh, you know, getting him to their clubs. Which is fair enough. Chelsea probably still go for Declan Rice, but Chelsea are looking for conventional CDMs. You know, we don't have a conventional central defensive midfielder other than maybe Dennis Sicaria, but he's played as an eight rather than a lone six. He's played as an eight in a midfield three, which shows you Chelsea, our manager Potter, doesn't see him as that CDM. Doesn't see him as that, you know, Rodri, Fabinho, Fernandinho, Nemanja Matic, Casemiro. Do you know what I mean? These like lone pivot players that are stoppers. You know, we, N'Golo Kante isn't that and never has been that, despite what some people might think. Um, Jorginho is a regista type of, you know, uh, central defensive player. Uh, he's more of a sort of tempo setter rather than uh, that kind of stopper. And he looks often very vulnerable in transition. We simply just don't have it. So this is the kind of midfielder we're looking for. Of course, Declan Rice would look prove to be that. But we're looking also at Alvarez of Ajax. And this is another article coming from Corp. So let's see what's saying. So, the Mexico international has shone in his time in the Eredivisie and is wanted by Chelsea last summer, or certainly was wanted by Chelsea last summer, though the club were understandably not keen to sell. It was a difficult few months for Ajax as they lost their manager, Eric Ten Hag, to Manchester United, uh, with the Dutch tactician then raiding 
raiding his old club for the signings of Lisandro Martinez and Anthony. Of course, Man United paying an incredible amount of money for both Lisandro Martinez and Anthony. Uh, Martinez looks like money well spent, I think. Uh, even though there was concerns about him. Anthony costs like 70 million. He costs like twice the amount of uh, Hakim Ziyech, ne although never even reaching anywhere near the number of Ziyech uh, made in the Eredivisie. Um, though he looks like he's quite young and looks like he could be good, Anthony. But yeah, they spent serious peas. And then they spent 70 million on Casemiro, which is a... Uh, for a 30 year old, wild. But you know, he looks very, very good, Casemiro. You think maybe if he goes for, I don't know, four years at the highest level, then I guess, you know, if whatever, that could be all right. It's still probably a little bit inflated price. The fact that Real Madrid just let Casemiro go is probably very telling. But then again, they've got Shuameni and Camavinga, etc., etc., etc. And on Alvarez, he really wanted this move to Chelsea in the summer and he publicly I think he publicly spoke um or the the headlines were suggesting that he's saying look how come Martinez and Anthony get to go and live their dreams when I get this opportunity it's denied to me which is like the short straw in the situation but at the same time you can understand Ajax would probably like dude we're gonna have no friggin' players left. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, just, just, just stop, <laughs> chill. Like, if, if you went first, then maybe we'd be saying this to one of the other guys, you know. But it, it is what it is. Alvarez looks uh, like the next big name who could leave Ajax for the Premier League, according to Romano, as he expects a race for his signature. Damn, there'll be a race for his signature. We should have just pushed in the summer. The transfer news expert, Romano did not explicitly say whether or not Chelsea would try for the 25-year-old again, but it seems like he will likely be one of the options as they still uh, admire the player. Quote, Romano said this, Edson Alvarez is one of the players Chelsea appreciate, but talks are ongoing now. It's been quiet since August, but I'm sure that in 2023, many clubs will keep an eye on him in the Premier League. Chelsea tried to sign him in the summer, but Ajax were clear they didn't want to sell and a deal could remain difficult. Um, I think personally that it was because they lost too many players, but give them another transfer window where they have a chance to recruit and replace and space to breathe. They'd be inclined to sell it to Alvarez. They love making money, of course. Romano added that Chelsea Football Club could repeat their trick with Christopher and Cuckoo with another with other transfer targets. He says this. Overall, Chelsea can be surprising as they have Todd Bowley making decisions on transfers, but now also a new board with Joe Shields, Lawrence Stewart, Paul Wynn Stanley, and of course soon to be announced Christopher Vivell from RB uh, to plan for new signings, he said. So everything is open. They will be very active on th future plans. I would not be surprised again if they uh, made an early move like they have for Nkuku. That's what Fabrizio Romano has said. Look, it's great that we've got this big team of um, like a holistic approach team for transfers now and maybe not just one geezer going, oh, he looks good, should we sign him? They'll sit down and I was hearing, um, I think it was Matt Law speak about this on the London is Blue pod. He was saying like, look, these guys come from different, um, you know, not just different clubs, but different countries, different footballing cultures, Vivelle from RB, we've got, you know, uh, people from Southampton, Brighton, like, you know, different different clubs, different backgrounds, different scouting experience. Now we've just joined up thinking that they can all sit together in a room and say, this is what's going to work. This is the project. And they can challenge each other, which I think is very, very important. One geezer with a plan is good, but a group of jo like minds uh, joined up thinking, challenging each other, saying, should we get this guy? Yes. N well, I think we shouldn't because of this. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Do you know what I mean? Not just a scouting team, but like strong, respected minds that all represent something in a room, I think is really, really helpful and should bode well for Chelsea. And uh, maybe that dictates whether we spend 70 million on Declan Rice, which I think is probably... A reasonable that's the well that's the you know the aforementioned Casemiro now I'm not saying Declan Rice is as good as Casemiro but I think he's like seven plus years younger than him um and of course he's English which rightly or wrongly probably wrongly adds a premium um you've got to you've got to consider that the the value in that but Edson Alvarez could be like 50 million 
you know? Especially if, if Ajax are planning ahead and they're not getting raided late in the window by Man United, so they've just chucked the price right up. That's what happened with Anthony. Um, you know, if they've got an opportunity to replace Edson Alvarez with their own scouting and say, yeah, you can have him for 50 mil or something. Do you know what I mean? Um, for me, though, it's really, really important Chelsea get this guy that wants to stop transition, that wants to stop passes you know into that final third that wants to um be able to pass out but you know ultimately he is a stopper he's like no you won't have chances you're not gonna have fun past here when you've got the ball in transition you can't just like you know glide through us or cut us like butter uh, it's not a criticism of Jorginho because I know the type of profile he is I know the type of player he is Sometimes in transition, when the ball gets past him, you just think, God, what are we doing? I feel bad for him as well, because we've left him in that position as well. Uh, like I said, it's not a criticism of him as a player. So that's what we need. And then, I've said it before millions of times, I'll reiterate my point, say it again. Chelsea can play, if we play in midfield free with a proper CDM like that, we can play a whole host of eights. And those eights could be Kovacic and Kante. Maybe not just both those two, because that would be a very non-attacking midfield. But you could go super attacking, like, you know, Mount and Gallagher. That's quite attacking two eights. Or you could, you know, Car Carney. Although well, Carney sometimes plays in the front three. You know, when Cesare Cassidy comes through, Arsene Zakarian, you know, even Kai Havertz. He did some good work under Frank Lampard playing as an attacking eight in a full three three. The options are endless. The options aren't endless in the selection of CDM and that ladies and gentlemen is what we need to buy so what do you think comment down below how do you feel about everything we've spoken about City again uh, you know uh, Edson Alvarez Mason Mance contract thank you so much I just realized the logo wasn't on there you go football therapy it's back <laughs> Thanks for liking and subscribing. Um, yeah, man. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you very, very soon, friends. Take care of yourselves. Peace.